Uh, it is good to be here this morning. I hope and pray that uh, you came with a heart of worship. Uh, just uh, to keep some things in mind that we got going on. Uh, next Sunday is supposed to be our uh, Lake Winnie trip. And I don't know if any of you have seen the weather yet, but it's supposed to be raining all day in Chattanooga. So uh, we need to figure out what we need to do, what an alternate alternative will be. Uh, so that we can do something with the kids, with the church, and still be able to do that. So be thinking on that a little bit, yes. Okay, so they changed it again. Well, it was like, it was like a 15, 25% chance. Okay. So, uh, I think it should still be good. Okay. So be much in prayer for that, that God just lets that water I got a water park up there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll try to figure that out. So, uh, uh, Wednesday night, Bible study, 6 o'clock. Be much in prayer for that. Continuing with the Baptist faith and message. Uh, if you can be here, uh, we'd love to have you. If you can't pray for us. Uh, also, Wednesday night, right after uh, Bible study, we need to have a personnel committee meeting. Uh, it's that time of year again. We've got to get everything ready for next church year and, and stuff like that. So be much in prayer for that uh, as we meet. And, uh, we may be coming to you and asking if you want to do a class or do something or whatever. But uh, Brent will be getting that up. And, uh, be much in prayer for that. Any other announcements? Brothers, Brotherhood will be September the 10th. I believe it's the second Sunday in September. Anything else? If not, if you look at your prayer guide this morning, uh, there are several within our church that need to continue to remember our prayers. Um, talked to Van this morning, and uh, Helen's fever has broke, and uh, she's just very, very, very weak. Uh, right now, uh, they're hoping that she gets to come home tomorrow, uh, but Van said they'll have to wait and see what they hold to uh, see how she does with that. But be much in prayer for Helen. Uh, she's just not there right now. Are there others that we need to mention that we haven't already? Uh, I would like you to, to, to continue. <coughs> Excuse me. To remember the uh, young lady at Crossville High School who uh, was having class that's been having the seizures and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of more uh, stuff going on now, uh, especially DHR is involved and uh, they kicked her out of her house and stuff. And it, it's, I can't imagine what she's going through, what she's trying to deal with. So be much in prayer for her. How about you, Mike? I'm okay. You ain't telling a story in church, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I just know, I think it's Wednesday night, Kayla said something about you having hip trouble or something, I didn't know. Yeah, I have got to schedule my hip surgery soon. Oh, okay. The doctor told me uh, that it's bone to bone, and if I keep waiting, I'm going to start wearing the piece off, where it's going to make it hard to do the replacement. So, okay. I'll have to be here with uh, the back. They're going to go in September 18th. Trying at the bureau, I'll buy it and release some of that. But I'm fine. I'm going to be the bionic man. I'm good. <laughs> oh, man. Anybody else? Keep the hood thing on. I It's one of Luke's friends. Uh, well, Friday, we had a break into her home and her husband's shop while her and her daughter were in the shower. But they didn't get in, and then 
they had enough nerve to come back yesterday, and it was in broad daylight. And she ran back in, they got her gun, and she shot one guy twice. They still got away. So she was really scared, and she never had to shoot somebody, so she's terrified of that. And then she doesn't know if she killed him. She doesn't know if they're going to come back. And, you know, she has small children, and she's, she's asked for prayers. Anybody else? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We thank you for today. Father, we just ask right now that you just forgive us of our sins and where we failed you. Lord, we just ask that you present us with clean hands and a clean heart this morning before you, Lord God. Father, we just pray that as we continue in this service this morning, Lord, as we offer up the sacrifice of praise of our lips, Lord God, that you get all the honor and all the glory. That, Father, your spirit shows up this morning and Lord we allow that spirit to be stirred <coughs> Lord, as we sing as the word is preached that Father God we let you have complete and total freedom in our lives this morning Lord that we don't hold you back that we don't try to build a wall up but Lord that we leave this place unashamed in every aspect of our life Father we pray for the ones that have been mentioned this morning Lord God, those that are in the hospital, Lord, those that are sick, whatever the case may be, Father, we just pray that Your will be done. And Lord, as we're about to enter into the time of preaching, Lord God, go ahead and prepare our hearts now for what You have in store for us, Lord God, that today lives can be changed and hearts can be touched. And Lord, we ask these things in Your Son's name. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come to as humble as we know how. Thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for all these people gathered here today. I pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds and our souls up. And bless Brother Byron as he brings some messages. Give us what we stand in need of through him. I pray, Lord, you bless this offering to Bethel Baptist Church and let it grow and prosper and be a soul winning station and light upon a hill for you. I pray, Lord, when the service is over and we go our separate ways, that we be a light upon the hill for you to everybody we come in contact with. Never be a stumbling block. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen.
anybody else this morning? A song or a word of testimony. If not, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. This is Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica. Uh, he is going to give us a lot to think about this morning. Uh, but we're going to continue with our theme of the Baptist faith the message and looking at looking at evangelism, looking at missions, and, and why why do we believe so much in evangelism and with missions? Why do we send money from this church to our local missions, to our state missions, and to our um, national or foreign missions as well? Why do we care about that? And when you put it into perspective, Brother Mike, it's amazing. And you look at Scripture and you go all the way back to Genesis chapter 12. And you can look at verses 1 through 3 there where God speaks to Abram and says, Take up thy house and everything with it and go. And you just go till I tell you to stop. And it, I love how our Sunday school lesson goes right along with this because the last question that was asked was, will you go? And, and I want to use that basically that same philosophy this morning is, will you go? Because if God were to tell you to get up right now and to take your house and everything you had and go till I tell you to stop, would you be willing to do it? If He told you to go to the next city, or if He told you to go back home to tell your family, or if He told you to go to Washington State, or if He told you to go to Europe, or if He told you to go to Africa, would you be willing to go? Why do we believe so much in evangelism and in missions? Well, let's look at what 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 says. If you would stand for the reverence of the reading of God's Word, we're going to begin with verse 5. It says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we uh, ask right now as we've broken the bread of life, but Lord God, You just open up our ears, our hearts, and our minds to receive Your Word, Lord God. As I, I stand behind this blessed book board today, Lord God, I pray that You would just hide me behind the cross. Give me the words to speak, to speak boldly, and with clarity of speech, Lord God, and recall to my memory the things of which I've studied. And Lord God, we just pray in such a mighty way, Lord, that the Spirit stirred once again. Lord, let lives be changed today. Uh, Father God, let directions be changed today. And Lord God, let thought processes be changed today. That Father, we know what Your Word says. Now let us go do it. Father, we ask these things in Your Son's name. And all God's children say it. Amen. 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 You know, a lot of times when you hear people speak about a job that they have, and they say that it is an honor or a privilege to be able to do that job, to be able to serve others. Uh, I had the uh, Army recruiter come to my room this week, and uh, he spoke to my kids, and every year I, uh, the Army guy comes, the Marine guys come, and uh, this year the Navy's going to come, and uh, just trying to teach them life about life lessons and also recruiting at the same time. But it never fails. 
that he always asked this question. He said, how many of you want to go in the medical field? And in every class, there's at least one person that will always raise their hand. And the next question is pretty interesting because the response is always the same. Why do you want to go into the medical field? You know what everybody says? To help others. Why would it be to help others? Well, I teach school. I help others. He said, I put on a uniform. I help others. What are you, what are you wanting to help others with? They, one girl said this past week, said, because it's an honor to be able to help somebody. And I thought about that, and I began studying even more on this. Brent, it is an honor and a privilege to be called a Christian. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to do the work of God. To be able to go out and to evangelize to a lost and dying world. And our Sunday school lesson pointed it out great. So many times we allow fear of the unknown to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. If Abram which was later Abraham would have told God, well, I don't know because I don't know this place you're wanting me to go to. God will never put you in a place where He's not already prepared the ground and the soil for production. Amen? Amen? Right. So if God is calling us to go somewhere, we need to go. You can go all the way back through Genesis. You can go throughout Scripture where God has called somebody to go. And Abram, when you look at it study, it became an honor and a privilege to be able to go to that place and, and to evangelize and tell people, this is my God. Well, so many of us, we are so scared of our own self that we don't allow ourselves to evangelize what God has called us to do. I, I'm not going to lie, I'm very thankful that we have uh, men and women still today that go into the foreign mission fields. But that God is allowing them to go into places in remote places of China. That they're going into uh, the remote tribes of uh, Africa and, and into the Amazon to spread the Gospel, to teach people about Jesus Christ. Uh, because I, I've never felt that wanting to go there. Uh, but in my back of my mind, I'm honestly questioning myself sometimes, okay, if God told me to pick up everything and I was to go home and tell Lacey, hey, we need to go to Africa, you know what? I'd be going to Africa by myself probably. And most of you, don't you lie? Because y'all sitting there doing the same thing. Well, if God calls, if you feel God calling you, you just go right ahead. I don't feel God calling me there. Can you imagine what Sarah told Abram? What you smoking today? <laughs> what have you got a hold of today? But Abram knew. That when the voice of God spoke, That's right. it was time to move. That's right. When you look at this and, and you put back into perspective, you go back to the Great Commission, and, and I'm going to read that to you just in case you forgot it. But when you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Where did He say it? He said, Go ye therefore into all nations. All nations. And when we put that into perspective of how is God dealing with us on the mission field or in the terms of evangelism, where is our all encompassing? Does our all mean that we're going to go to the house and do it to our family that is lost? Or are we going to go into our community of Geraldine and, and tell people about Jesus Christ and be lost? And You know, this is something I keep bringing up. You drive down the road and you can't go anywhere without passing churches. And in Geraldine itself, we've got 1,500, it seems like. There's a church on every corner. You go through Rainsville, there's one everywhere. Go through five, there's three sitting right beside one another on one street. 
They ain't 400 yards apart between any of them. There's three sitting right there. And all three of them have people that come. But we have communities that people have never stepped foot into a church house. That's right. And we have communities where people have still yet to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. Whose fault is that? It's ours. That's right. It's ours. Why? Because Jesus gave us a command to go to you, therefore, in all nations. That's right. Go everywhere. But we allow that fear to say, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know how, what, how am I going to do this? God said, if you'll go, I'll prepare it. That's right. He said, you'll have the words to speak if you'll just go. We've got to get out of the fear of ourselves. And I love, when I say that, this is why I love 1 Thessalonians so much. Is when you look at Jesus Christ has called us to go into all nations making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and to teach them to observe all things of which I've commanded you. Not only are we supposed to go into these places and teach them how to get saved, but it says, once you do that, we've got to teach them what the Bible says. How are we supposed to be living? Whatever I've commanded you, you need to be telling these people about that. That's right. Why? Because if we would get back to that, we would see a world that would be changing. We would see a country that would be changing. But we have so many Christians across this country that are so scared of their own selves that they, won't, they don't want to teach what God's commanded. That's right. Why? Because that's not the status quo. That's not the right thing to be doing now. If I just keep my mouth shut, maybe I'll be okay. That's right. I don't know if any of you watched the news this week, but in Washington State, football coach has been relieved of his duties. Uh, his case went before an appellate court. They lost. They ruled against uh, the football coach. Uh, more than likely, this case is going to wind up before the United States Supreme Court. It's going to be a landmark case uh, because Every game after the game was over, nobody else was involved. He would walk out to the 50-yard line. He would kneel down. He would pray. He would get back up, and he would go out. They told him that you, you can't have any type of religious symbol like that because that is affecting those that might be in the stands, and, and you can't do that. And, and he, he was on a lot of the talk shows this week, and he said, when I got the job, I told God I would give him the glory for winning, for losing and for everything. Right. He said, I was not going to step down. They called him into the office and told him uh, that he couldn't do that anymore, that it was against the law for him to do that uh, because he did not have that freedom of speech to pray like that because he was a public employee. He told him he wouldn't do it. The next football game, game come. He went and kneeled. He was relieved of his job. They fired him. He took it to the court and he's lost both times. Here's the thing, guys. He took a stand on the mission field. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he said, it don't matter where I'm at, I'm still going to pray and I'm going to be that witness. That's right. We need more people that are willing to do that because right. more people need to see that. Right. Uh, in the month of September, Tim Tebow was coming to our high school to speak. Uh, Kids all over the county have a chance to get free tickets to go to his night to shine. Why is it such a big deal? Because he is a man of integrity that it didn't matter. He's made millions of dollars. But he said it don't matter one hill of beans if I'm an athlete, if I can throw a football, or if I can hit a baseball. He said my job is to witness for Christ. That's right. My job That's right. is to do this. God has given me the platform of football and baseball to share the gospel. Guys, God has given you a platform. That's right. It may be as a pipe welder. It may be as a jug maker. It, it may be as a chicken farmer. It may be whatever. But God has given us a platform to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you are a born-again Christian, you, you better consider it an honor right. and a privilege to be able to do that. Why, why does any of that matter to 1 Thessalonians? I want you to see what it says. <coughs> Verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. What is Paul talking about? <coughs> we know that through Scripture, salvation comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. That's right. Paul was in Thessalonica for less than a month. 
I want y'all to try to put this into your minds. Okay? Paul came into Thessalonica, stayed less than a month, but during that lunch time, he tried to talk to as many people as he could and tried to start the church. Okay? And he leaves, and here he's writing a letter back to them. He says, not only did your salvation come from the Word, but he said it came with power and from the Holy Ghost. Why? With much assurance because you knew the men who were among you. Right. Don't you think about that last statement? <clears throat> because you knew what kind of men were among you. In order to be on the mission field and for evangelism to work, and I saw this yesterday on social media and it is so true. A guy come and he tweeted this. He said, why is it that so many of you say that you're a Christian or have a, something about church in your profile, yet everything you post is con contrary to the Word of God? That's right. Mm -hmm. that's said, I don't want that. If that's what you have, I don't want it. Amen. And I thought, oh, my how the world has changed. That's right. Because it used to mean that if you were a Christian, it meant something and you were different. That's right. The Bible has called us a peculiar people that we're supposed to be different. Paul said, yes, you heard the Word of God, but you could see it in the lives of the men that presented it because they were filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. That's right. They weren't just somebody walking on. They were somebody that knew Jesus Christ and they were willing to tell you. Don't be like the world, but be like God. That's why the Bible says is to be friends with the world is to be an enmity with God. To be an enemy of the Why? Because you're sitting here saying all this, yet you're doing a completely different thing. Nobody's going to want to know what you have. Why? Because you are not effectively working on the mission field. But Paul says, look, he says you, you've received that, and he goes on in verse 6 to talk about how you followed us and you followed Jesus Christ. Right. But he says that you were an example, or as we know today, an example to everybody that lived in Achaia and Macedonia. Give you a little geography lesson. If you get a map of Europe today, you will see the Grecian archipelago, which is on the far eastern side of Europe, right before you get to Southwest Asia. But Greece was Achaia. Alright? And in Macedonia, Actually, present-day Macedonia, where we know Alexander the Great came from our Sunday school lesson, is just above Greece, and it's just a little bitty place. But during this time, it was actually still part of Achaia. Okay? But if you go just north of Greece, you had Macedonia. And Macedonia encompassed Serbia, Montenegro, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and I think part of Belarus, and different places like that. But Paul said, you were an example to everybody in those two countries. But he said, not only were you an example to those, but you were an example wherever you went. And he said, because of your example, because of how you were, we don't even have to come back. Why? Because you're doing what God's called you to do. That's right. You want to know what's sad if you look up the statistics? There needs to be more missionaries sent to North America than anywhere in the world right now. Would you like to know what's crazy? We live in DeKalb County. But you want to know where they're sending the most missionaries to in our state? Jackson County. And they're just right there, guys. Right. And if they're just right there, what's happening here? That's right. So we have to do our job and we have to be an example to everybody around us 
great or small. And we have to be on the mission field doing exactly what God's called us to do. And, and when you look at this and you look at chapter 9 or verse 9 of that chapter, it tells you about the three tenses of the Christian life. And I, I just want to briefly go over this. But when you read verse 9 and 10, it tells you those tenses. But I'm going to go back up to verse 3 because 3 lays it out just a little bit better within this chapter and we can go back and look at 9 and 10. Why were they such an example to the people that were around them? How did that happen? Because you see, that area was filled with idol worship. You think about Greece. Okay? Think about the Greek gods. They spent more time serving and idolizing Zeus and Athena and Poseidon. Jehovah Yahweh God was just somebody else. Who cares? And to go back to the question the guy asked you, you can have a whole lot of different gods and still be just as lost in going to hell That's right. as anything else. Right. I can sit there and worship that witch. I can sit there and worship Zeus. But it's not going to get me anywhere. Why? Because Zeus ain't going to do anything. That's right. That witch is not either. But look at what happened when the Word of God spread through Macedonia and Acadia. <laughs> Look at verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. I want to stop right there. Work of faith. What does that mean? If you go back to verse 9, all right, it says, For they themselves show us <coughs> excuse me, what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols. What is a work of faith? It is when God gets a hold of you and you turn away from everything that you used to know to serve God. That's right. You give everything in your life over to God. They completely left everything they knew and went to somewhere that was brand new. Why? Because of faith in God. That's right. Go back to Genesis chapter 12. What did Abraham do? He left everything he had ever known to go to somewhere new. Why? Because God told him to. Because of faith. Right. So what is that work of faith? That is accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and turning away from the things you used to be to be somebody that's completely different. Then when you walk out, you can be an example right. where you can show the rest of the world, where you can show Geraldine, Alabama that I'm a different person, where you can show Fife, where you can show Crossville, where you can show Rangeville that you're a different person. Why? Because somebody might see you here and they might see that example. They might get saved because of that example. And they may go somewhere else in the world. Why? Because they're going to follow the commission wherever it is God's told them to go. Into all nations. Whether that's here or there. But what did it say next? Look at verse 3. Go back up there. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. What does that mean? The labor of love is serving God. That's right. Putting everything you have, every day that you wake up, picking up your cross, denying yourself, and following after Him. Wherever you go, whether He puts you here, or San Diego, California, That's right. or Macedonia, or Achaia, that you serve the living God with all power and strength in your body. Did he say it was going to be easy? No, he didn't. But is it worth it? Yes. You better believe it. Why? Because he's going to take care of you. You may have to go through trials and hardships, but guess what? When it's all said and done, I'll, I'll pray like John did. Even so, come Lord Jesus. That's right. Why? Because I know. But what was the next step? Look at verse 3 again. And labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God in the sight of God and our Father. When you look at that, you go to verse 10 and it says, and to wait for His Son from heaven whom He raised from the dead. As you're working, as you're witnessing, as you're evangelizing a lost and dying world by the way you live and by what's coming out of your mouth, we have a hope. <coughs> and we're waiting for Jesus to come back. I want to leave you with this. When you go to chapter 2, verse 4, it says, 
but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the Gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God. I want you to think of how powerful that verse is. As a born again Christian, you are entrusted with the Word of God to speak, not pleasing men, but pleasing God. Church, we need to start pleasing God rather than men. And as the Apostle said in the book of Acts, we must obey God rather than man. It's come to a time in our country where we have a war going on between what is right and what is wrong. And those that stand for the Word of God and stand for right, it's time that we stand up and we fight the fight. It's time that we stop letting somebody else tell us what is right. Folks, we need to get in the Word of God and understand just how powerful it is. When the Bible says that it's sharper than any two-edged sword that splits in the bone and marrow, this can change our country. Right. A politician standing in D.C. or Montgomery is not going to change it. But the Word of God can. I mean, I want you to think about it. And this is not for political reasons or anything else. But you look at Alabama State Senate race. Roy Moore, Luther Strange, and the Republicans. And people are like, why has Roy Moore even got a chance? He's been fired from his job twice already. Why? Because he stands on a moral value called the Word of God. Right. And people in Alabama need to start getting back to the moral compass. I'm not here to endorse anybody, but I'm here to endorse the Word of God. That's right. What does that mean? Get in the Word of God and let God shape your decisions. Let God shape your outcomes. Right. Shape your motives. That's right. Folks, if we're to be an example, we better start living it from here. Not just because somebody else said so. That's right. So I want to ask you, as the Sunday school lesson asks, will you go? Wherever God's called, That's right. will you go? Would you stand with me this morning? Whatever the need is in your life, whatever's going on, I don't know what it is. But it's time we start being examples. If people look at your stuff that you put online and, and have to question whether or not you're a Christian, we got problems. That's right. If people look at your life as you're at work and they question whether or not you're a Christian, we've got a problem. That's right. Now granted, I, I'm here to tell you I'm human just like anybody else. There's times I get mad, I get frustrated. But are you allowing that to control your life? Are you allowing that to be who you're known as? That's right. Or are you going to be that example that they were in Macedonia and Achaia? Nicholas, whatever your song is, whatever your need is this morning, would you come? telling if it even works, it's fine. We don't have to have that. But I want you to understand. Think about it this morning. Whatever God's dealing with you in your life, would you do? Just whatever you got.
Remember, God has entrusted you with His Word. That's right. How powerful of a possession you have. That's right. Therefore, you know that the job you have comes with great responsibility. That's right. Any word or announcement before we dismiss? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I, I need to share this. Uh, I've got a praise report this morning. Bless you. And I want everybody to get prepared for this because I don't want you to think that I'm just totally lost my mind. I've got a praise report. I'm praising God because my truck sat in my garage with a flat tire on the right back. Why is that? He's lost his mind. I'm praising God because he's got a flat tire. Well, let me Bless tell you the Lord. story. Bless him, Lord. Last night we went to see my sister. We came home. We stopped and got groceries. And it got later, and we were on our way home. And we had started toward Jordan, and my light came on and said, you got a low tire. And I know what that means. Sometimes that means it may last a good while, and it may go flat immediately. And Jenny and I both just started praying, Lord, if it's your will. Let's, let's get home. And he did. And we unloaded our groceries, and the tire was still up. And he allowed me to put it in the garage. So now it's where I can at least deal with it. I could not have dealt with it last night on the side of the road somewhere. I didn't even have a flashlight. And you know, the whole world will dismiss that and say, well, it's coincidence. The tire was going to hold up regardless. I believe my God can control it. Amen. 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 Anybody else this morning? Brother Brian, um, I have a, I know some people in the white family, they had a death in the family and they're not taking it well at all, so Dr. Yes. Anybody else this morning? I still believe without a shadow of a doubt, God's fixing to do something. I don't know what, and I don't know how. But church, you better be ready. That's right. Amen. For what it happens. That's right. I told Mike and them and Ronnie and Brent over three years ago that I see a new church sitting right there. And I know that's not just because of me wanting. It, but God's fixing to do something. That's right. And you better be ready. That's right. God's entrusted you with the Word. Share it. That's right. If we do what we're supposed to do, God said, I'll draw them nigh unto you. Right. I'll bring them to you. Do our job. Anything else? If not, shake hands with your neighbor. Consider yourself dismissed.